I'm live. <clears throat> so I'm here in Koh Rong, Cambodia. It's an island off Cambodia, and I'm at Palm Beach Bungalows. I've been here for two nights, and we have one more night. And I'm here with the drummer from my band. There's a fly attacking me. It's like almost 5 p.m., so the sun is getting way less intense, getting close to going down. We came out to the beach. We're walking up to it now. Ugh, there's a swampy part. Sometimes you can see little tiny crabs running around. Hey, you freaking hoser. <laughs> You can hear like jungle animals. <laughs> yeah, the amount that this water recedes and comes in, like, you know, with the tides is crazy. Like, see how, where it is there? In the morning, it would be actually where we started. Like the water would come all the way up to like here. <laughs> so where we're walking right now is all underwater usually. You can tell by the way it looks. But at certain times of the day, the water comes in and goes back out, obviously. So I guess now it's low tide. It's way out there. And it's Kamai New Year right now. That's like, that's why we're, it's like a holiday weekend or week or whatever. It basically goes from like Saturday till Tuesday. And now it's Monday today. Good to see you're out in a boot. I might go there in a couple of weeks. Jonathan says, howdly doodly. I've put a bunch of shorts up that are cool. We did a, there's a waterfall you can either motorbike to or walk to it. It's about an hour walk. And they warned us that at this time, cause it's just in the heat wave season that there might not be any water there when you get to the waterfall. <laughs> but uh, we thought we want to hike through the jungle anyway. And like, so I made a, I captured video doing that. And I did a video on like this whole resort that we're at. And then I've made a bunch of shorts of our of the walk and I, we ate this like dried up fish jerky. They like catch a fish and dry it out in the sun. And I was eating that and uh, I had a lizard or something. This place is really good. I thought it would be worse. Like they keep uh, exceeding my expectations. Cocktails are $2. Usually on the island, they rip you off because you're stuck here, but that's $2 is cheaper than in the city. <laughs> the food's a little bit expensive, but it's cause it's, n but it's nice though. It's not like you, it's expensive and then you gets to you and it's like instant food. It's not, it's like really home cooked food, really big portion and stuff, but it's like six or $7 a meal. You know, breakfast is a bit cheaper, like four, f four to six. And then like, five to eight at dinner time. Yeah, there's been no, no fixed addresses saying there's been no traffic in Phnom Penh this last few days because everyone's on holiday. Turns into a ghost town. A lot of, a lot of the locals go out to the province or wherever their extended family is and stuff.
How much for a can of Cambodia? They don't. Re they only have draft on the menu. It's a dollar fifty. And then they have pitchers, and you can also get like a tower, which is like a big, giant thing. I forget how much those were. And then uh, liquors are only two dollars, and then you, if you want a mix with it, it's an extra dollar. So it would be like three for a mixed drink. But they have. Uh, like outside of the restaurant, they out in the middle of the common area, there's a like a beach bar that it's basically open from like whatever, like noon till six. And there the cocktails are only two dollars. So it's kind of like the happy hour bar. And on the menu and I had it already, they had a uh, Kamai whiskey and they have they have other whiskeys, too. But if you get the Kamai whiskey, it's only a dollar fifty. And they have tequila, they have everything, it's only $2. Jonathan says he was in Phnom Penh for three years. So we made it out to this sandbar. And yeah, if you have questions about teaching or you want to, you see yourself doing this kind of life, uh, you know, post a comment or check out my videos. I, I help people that want to do it. Matt here is actually from Canada too. He's from like a half an hour away from where I'm from in Canada. He also took the AVSE course. That's the TESOL program where you become certified to be a teacher. He took the same one uh, almost a year ago now. And he's been working and everything's fine. And I had a full-time job for a year and a half and then I stopped to be more artist and creator. And then I felt like I wanted to work part-time. I started applying and I found a language center right away. Like it, it's really reputable and looks good on your resume. I put a link in the description. They help you out with everything from visas to where to stay during the course. And then they line you up with a job afterwards. That's the important part. <laughs> it takes place in the country, <clears throat> which is good. Cause then when you get there and you're, you know, you're showing up alone, you'll have a class of like 10 other people that are all in the same boat. You have friends instantly. And then you do stuff together and you study together and you might even get hired at the same school as people in your class. Like they'll hire two or three of you. <clears throat> that happened to me. Or if you'd rather chip away at it in your own time, you, you can do the course online at home. And if you're someone that's already, a, you already have a certificate. Yeah, I already did a TESOL. I got a cheaper one I found or whatever. So you already have a certificate. They've got a separate program just to line you up with jobs to get you set up to, you sort of go practice at a few schools and you observe some teachers and then they coming out of it, they line you up with a uh, job interviews. <clears throat> so all those things are available and it's also available in for Vietnam. So everything I said applies to Cambodia and for Vietnam. Check out this uh, resort across. Sorry, I don't have my gimbal. I'm gonna hold it with two hands and be steady here. It's like a private island with these like luxury bungalows. Those are probably like five times what we're paying. We have our own like cabin in there and it's a, uh, we got a family one. So it's like two big beds and lots of space and a porch and you can see the water and it's like 24 a night, but two of us, so it's just 12 a night. And usually for 12 a night, you're like in a bunk bedroom with other people and stuff like that. So it's a really good price. We're happy with it. Bro, I might head up to Siem Reap next week. I'm thinking of a house 
or shop house there for the end of the year. 350 a month for a house? Got to check that out. Yeah, I think you could find that there. In this place too, they have their own special boat. The speed boats don't come here. You have to go to a different pier and they have their own boat. And it takes two hours instead of one hour because it's not a speed, it's a, like a regular boat. And then when you get here, you can sign up. It costs 20 bucks and you can go on this trip they have, like a boat ride trip. And it includes like, uh, you, they take you out on a boat ride and then you go snorkeling in this special area. And then they take you somewhere else with the boat and you you all go fishing and the way they did it is they gave everyone this like big plastic spool that you're holding in your hands that has fishing line on it and it already has all the sinkers like all the weights and a hook and they put a bit of squid on there and so everyone just like drops a line in and you let it go down and you just sort of are you know pulling on it get making it trying to entice fish to and then they said if we catch fish they can barbecue them on the boat not i didn't catch one but a few other people caught these like tiny ones and then they they barbecued them up and then uh what did we do after that then they went oh yeah then we were on our way back and then we watched the sunset and we kept on fishing and then when the sun went down then they brought us somewhere where you could jump in the water and see bioluminescent plankton just like little things in the water that they they'll glow like blue they like naturally they like light up in the water it's blue color but you know what it's like tough to see it it's kind of bs a little bit if you can get lucky and get a really thick thing of it and see it it's like lucky like usually it's like i could barely i think i saw it i think i saw one sparkle like you a lot of the time you can't even see it anyway but if you do it, it's amazing. Yeah, man, that's like jigging for pickerel. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say, I was gonna say jigging, but I didn't know if people knew that exactly jigging for pickerel. Cause you can't just leave it. It helps if you like move it a bit with your, I just kind of hang onto it with one hand and with your finger, you kind of make the bait move a bit. Like, <clears throat> I got bites. I had a few bites and then I would, you know, you give a little pull to set the hook and then, but it was just like nothing. And then after a while I brought it up and then there was no bait on it. So like they got, something got my squid. But I just put more on and kept going and I never caught anything. I've fished before, Canadians, man. We go camping and go fishing, but that's why it's called fishing. It's not called catching. <laughs> you don't always catch. It's still cool to feel a bite. You know, you feel it like getting a bite feels good anyway. Yeah, and I already talked about the waterfall, right? Yeah, we did it. We did this walk. It was kind of like seeing a lot of the different, because it would be, some of the walk was, like the ground would be more like sand and you're closer to the water. And then it, some of it goes through more like jungle. And then some of it goes through like where people were living and you see these tiny little home, like little sh cottage shacks, like deep in the jungle. And we're walking down a path where there's like a stretch of maybe there's one and then a little further down another one and another one. And they're all like really friendly and everything. And, and I got all that, when I get home, I'll edit all that together and make a video. And then we saw a monkey Oh, and another thing we saw on that walk is a bush that had, it looked like a, a red pepper kind of, and underneath it, a little cashew. And it, and I didn't really know that. I think I have seen that before, but that's how cashews look on a, when they grow. It's kind of like this big red thing, like almost looks like a little red pepper. And coming out underneath is one little fat cashew. And I got, I got that on film. It's enough of my face. A friend of mine lives in uh, a friend of mine lives in PP. He says it's more difficult to find teaching jobs now compared to 2019. So I will use AVSC teaching jobs program when I go back. Yeah, recommend it. 
It doesn't. Sometimes people have asked me, oh, is that so good it takes the place of having a degree? And no, it does not. But sometimes schools that are would prefer someone that has experience, when they see that you have AVSE, you're, you're almost held as equal to someone that has ex, like one year experience or like, because even the school I worked at, I tried to get one of my friends hired and they, they wouldn't even call him back because just because on the resume, there wasn't teaching experience. And then, and I said, I never had teaching experience and you hired me and they said, well, AVSC, then we can like trust more that you already know what you're doing and stuff. And you, you just didn't get a random one from online that you can go out there and just get like a printout and pay like whatever cheap price and it's not even legit. But they know AVSC is government accredited and it's strong reputation. So they, they trust, even though you don't have teaching experience, they'll still trust you because of that. So it doesn't take the place of a degree, but it almost takes the place of experience, of a little bit experience. It's not equal to someone with like 10 years experience, obviously, but. And also with the AVSC program, part of it is they put you in schools and you take over the class for an hour and you do that like eight times with different age levels and different things. So by the time you're out of there, you do have experience. You've like tried it a few times with kindergartners. You've tried it with like teenagers. You tried it with in between like, and you sort of have a feel for what age group you'd prefer or how you, how you want to do your kind of lessons or whatever. The fishing trip, I didn't videotape. <laughs> I know you're gonna be like, no, that was the coolest part. I was worried because there's so much of it is jumping in the water. I didn't want my, lose all my shit. And then I was getting a little bit seasick. Like I don't really like being on a boat. And then, so I just thought I'm not gonna like stress out about getting all this footage and stuff. I'm just gonna enjoy it. <clears throat> But I think too, this trip I told you about with the boat thing, people from other resorts uh, came here to go on it too. Like there was other people on the boat with us that weren't even from our resort. They, so they, they probably hand out a flyer to the resorts that are close by saying, hey, if any of your people want to do a boat ride, we do one over here for, you know, 20 bucks. So um, you don't even have to stay here to do the boat ride. You could stay anywhere on Korong and then come over here. It starts at 3 p.m. So it's not like you have to wake up early or anything. So even if you're on a different part of the island, it's kind of, they rip you off because they know you're a foreigner, but if, but you could like hire a local guy and his little motorboat and he'll just take you around the edge of the island, like to where you need to be. Or you can hire tuk-tuks or motorcycle guys. So there'll be a video coming about the jungle hike and seeing the monkey and the cashew and everything. And there'll be a video about this whole resort in general in the room that we had. And and I did a live stream on the way over here on the boat when we were about 20 minutes away. <clears throat> and then we arrive and then you see us walk in and that live stream. And then now I'm doing this live stream too. Online teaching to freedom. Hey Tom, love the channel. I have experience and degree. I'm currently making my IPGCE and looking for an international school. I'm considering Cambodia. I'm in Thailand now, any tips? Uh, I don't know, the school I worked at was called Western International. So you could look, look them up on Facebook or wherever and send them a message. They have many campuses. Or if you want, check in the link in the description to the AVSC TESOL program. 
Because even though you already have a certificate, they have a separate program for if you're already certified and you just want help finding jobs. They have a, it's called Teaching Jobs Abroad program. And you do a little bit of, uh, they help you brush up your lesson planning kind of techniques and then they let you observe some teachers in Cambodia and then you get to take over the class for a few times. And then you, they're sending your CV out on your behalf to all the schools that are in need that they're connected to. And then you'll just start getting emails, uh, you know, asking when you're available to interview. And you'll you, usually you meet with a few, you know, one or two or three different schools. And then you, you hear back and you pick which one you like, or you get the one you just get, try for one and you get it and you work there. Like, I had a few interviews. One of them, they didn't tell me till I got there that they only wanted a girl. And I was like, why didn't, why did you make me come down here then? Like, I don't know, why'd you interview? It was for a kindergarten thing too. And I made, I wrote a song on, I brought an acoustic guitar. I was like Phoebe from Friends. I made a whole sing along for these kids and it, and I delivered it and it, and it wasn't like a flop. It went good. And I had a part where I was, I played for a while and then I stop and I go like that. And then the, it's like intuitive that they should say something and they all did it like so it like landed you know what i mean i was like yes and then the kids are like are you coming back on monday and they were like it was like so going over so well and then we have the interview after the demo and she's like i don't know why they called you in like we, we wanted a female for this for like young really young age group they usually only want female Yeah, don't get bit by the lizard. Like just for lunch today, I had a chicken amok, which is like a Cambodian curry thing. And usually they make that with fish, but I had it with chicken and it was so good, man. And it's like coconut curry. It's not that spicy. That's the only sort of bad thing, but I guess you could just add chilies to it. And it was so good. I think it was 625. So that's not that bad when you're at a resort on the island. Especially like it really just burns when you pay that much and then it comes to you and it looks like microwaved or it's like instant. Then I'm like, oh my God, this was nice. Like, there's people cooking it. Like it's very nice, fresh. Jonathan, and with the teaching jobs abroad program, you will not have to wait three months before finding your first job. So it's worth 750. Yeah. It's good experience too. Like the little thing where you get to observe some teachers they send you around to some schools and you sit at the back and observe the teacher do the class and you make, you sort of make notes about what kind of teaching style you think they had and things you liked about it or whatever. And you do that, I forget how many times, I'm sorry, but it, you do that like maybe six times or something. And each time is like a different type of school or a different age group. Kindergarten, grade six, uh, a drop-in school where there's like monks, or they're like, or you go there and you're like observing all these different places. And then you do pretty much the same thing, except now when you show up, you you're the one taking over the class, and they, they give you some material a few days ahead of time so you can make a plan. The the real teacher is like, here's what we'll be working on that day, and you get that ahead of time, and so you make you have to take your lesson planning skills that you just got. They, they also, part of that program, they brush up your lesson planning skills a little bit. And then uh, you make a plan and go in back to those schools and you do the class for an hour and the real teacher sits at the back and they observe you and give, and afterwards they give you their feedback. And you don't have to be scared of that. You'll obviously look like a, you'll be like a total noob unless you already have experience like teaching. But. Everyone knows what it's like when you first start. It's uh, especially people that aren't good at public speaking or getting up in front of people. And you get over that really fast, trust me, like it, within less than a week, probably like 
by day three you're walking in all right guys like blah, blah, blah. it's like turns into just so normal yeah online teaching to freedom says i'll check it out after the live yeah and that's the other thing it's not like uh it hurts to check it out like you could just click go uh make up your own mind or whatever but that's that's my input on it but you could go on the website and read about it and i think on the website they post what do you call that testimonial like people leave reviews and stuff and write about how, their experience and stuff so you can read other people what they thought about it thought about it sorry i'm showing my own mug too much someone said that one time i've got a 120 hour tefl certificate did it online yeah that would be fine well unless as long as it's legit that one sounds like it is for sure that, that one sounds normal to me there's been a few times where people watch my videos and they they say they have a certificate and then they sign up for this teaching jobs abroad and the director of the course is like, okay, send us your TEFL. So, cause that's part of that. That's for people that already have a certificate. So he's like, okay, let's see your certificate. And if you have a bogus one, they'll, they'll email you back and say, sorry, this is not an actual, like, cause they can't, AVSC is not going to like put their neck out for you and, and put you into a school and give you a job when you, when you don't have a, a an actual TEFL. But I think the one you just said is sounds, it sounds like the ones that are uh, like the legit ones are like that 120 hour and you're working in Thailand. Like, of course, that sounds like a good one. It's people that di they go online to some weird website and pay like $20 and they get a printout and then they come. Oh, yeah, here's my TEFL. Like, that's not going to work with AVSC. You have to have an actual one. Kid Tack says, it's it's totally worth it. I did a TEFL course and I found a teaching job within two weeks. Yeah. Imagine if you were at the school in charge of hiring. It's just someone walking in off the street. It's, it's kind of like a blind date. You don't know who you're, and it's already risky. A lot of teachers, a lot of people coming here are traveling and they're kind of weird or eccentric or they're running from something back or they're mentally what it, like a lot of people that need to escape and so teachers are always there's a lot of transition like a lot of time they'll work for only a year and then oh now i'm gonna live in vietnam or i'm gonna move here or there let's see here i found a teaching job within two weeks I guess the sun will set right there. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So if, if you were in charge of hiring and, and you would get in trouble if you hire someone that doesn't work out and then right away you're back to, and then you have to hire someone else again. And then the kids keep going back to their parents. Our teacher keeps changing and you can't find us a teacher. Then it, that looks really, then the parents are going to move their kids out to another school and so the person in charge of hiring they just want someone that's going to work out like <laughs> so imagine you're that person and you have resumes or cvs coming across your desk and you have also ones that avsc are emailing to you with like a avsc letterhead and everything and there's risk with anyone but i mean they they i think they feel like that's going to be a safer bet coming from an institute like that instead of uh, Joe Schmo, Schmo or whatever. And they might interview everybody, but imagine uh, if two people are equal in the interview, but one had AVSC, then that's just like, well, that's one. Well, I guess he's got that. Like, it's just something that helps. It's a little bit of ammo that helps you. He says he was an emergency hire for a school in Phnom Penh. Yeah, sometimes a bunch of teachers leave at the same time or they you never know what happens it happened at my school even when i left at my old job 
it was I did a whole year and then when the summer came we had the option to not work the summer but you don't get paid but you can have it off and come back in September so I said I was gonna do that and then when it was 30 days away from September I decided 30 day notice I'm not coming back like helicopter maybe you can take a helicopter ride Yeah, Palm Beach Bungalow, you could Google it. There's some good pictures of it. Or stay tuned, I've got videos coming and uh, I put a few shorts up already. And I did a live stream at the end, like the live stream I did like two days ago or something, I think it says I'm on a boat. If you don't wanna watch, like it's probably like an hour long, just scroll to the last 10 minutes of it and then we'll be like just arriving here and then that's the more exciting part unless you want to see the boat now like start watching it and then as soon as you get bored just fast forward drag the thing to the end closer to the end and then we're, we'll be like getting off the boat and then it looks better <laughs> And all this stuff I'm talking about with the school and the course and all that, you can also do it in Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam. But to work in Vietnam, you have to have a degree. So as long as you have a degree, you could do the same thing in Vietnam and uh, Hanoi is coming. So, and I've, uh, I just went to Ho Chi Minh to show you guys what it's like there. So if you look at my playlist, I have like six videos there of when I went to Ho Chi Minh a month ago. Yeah, it's great views. This could be your life. And if you have more questions and or you're watching this later when it's not live, like you could find me on Instagram and just send me a DM or comment on here and I'll answer. Even though I recently got a lot of subscribers, I, I still, <clears throat> I still see, d answer all my comments. I don't get, I don't get that many where I can't answer them. Like, the water's coming in look this little island I'm on is shrinking and now his shoes are in the water and look all this we walked over this land I was just showing you guys this land he's way out there I'm gonna take his shoes and go to the go in a bit Ugh. The tides are changing, boy. We were just walking on this in dry land. It's up to my knees now. I got my shoes on, so it's okay, but he was telling us to watch out for sea urchins, those spiky things. And there's also crabs, but they, they see you coming. They run away before you even get to them. But there's little tiny crabbies that run around. Okay, now I'm on high ground. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. That little island is turning into a little sliver. Oh. 
the water she's coming in yeah i remember this we were looking at this shipwreck thing and it was it looked odd that it, there was no water anywhere near it <laughs> and now it's like touching it i guess it's now it's a silhouette because of the sun there but This is a nice time of day because the sun isn't so intense. <clears throat> I can still feel the heat. This is the hottest time of the year in Cambodia, actually. Last week, there was such a bad heat wave. It's like, like 44 Celsius. And then there's humidity. It's just like insanely hot. I come out of my bedroom. My air, bedroom's air conditioned, so it's fine. But I come out of there in the morning and my bare feet touch the floor outside. And like the floor is like hot in my apartment. <laughs> like the, unbelievable how hot it is. And like the shower, I don't even turn the heater on anymore for the water. And the water, you can't get cold water. It's like the, it's so hot outside that the, the pipes that carry the water are warm. Like it's just warm, only warm water. <laughs> it's so hot. And it chilled out a bit, but it's still hot. Like it chilled out. It's not 44, but it's been like 36, 37 every day, which is still super hot, super duper hot. <clears throat> Let's get over to this ship. And hey, if, if you like the channel or you want to support what I do, you can always send a super thanks or a donation or just press like on a bunch of videos or Help me out somehow, share it. This is pretty cool. It's all kind of barnacles or whatever they are. It does look nice. It was really cloudy the other day, so like we were looking at that the other day, but you couldn't see the sun clearly. Like right there, it would be going behind the clouds. Like that's what we were seeing the other day. This looks better, but you can actually see the ball, the sun, like as a ball. <laughs> Oh, is that a jellyfish or a leaf? Oh, I think it's like a lily pad. It's a dead, dried up lily pad. Yeah, like that, <laughs> that little island I was on is gone, the sandbar. Good thing I moved his towel. So online teaching to freedom said, why did you choose Cambodia? It's because I don't have a degree and it, it's one of the few countries where you don't require a degree to have a work permit here. Vietnam, Thailand, they want you to have a degree. And you could be like, oh, I know someone that does it, but like they're on, they're working under the table or it's sketchy. Like to do it all properly and have all the documents, yeah. In those countries, you need a degree. What was I gonna say? Yeah, over Thailand and Vietnam. Yeah, those places are very nice and way more developed. It's a better life and teachers can make almost double the money, but it's because you have to have a degree in those countries. I don't have a degree, so I can't put, in Cambodia, you only need a TESOL to be a teacher. And a lot of the time they don't even ask about that. Or like, like my, my job I have now, 
they asked me, but that's it. Like it was just verbal. And you went to, and they read it off the page, A, V, S, C, blah, blah. And I'm like, yep. And then that was my proof. Like just, so I could have like been lying. Like, but sometimes they'll want it notarized and they want the real thing. Like, especially in Vietnam is really more, way more strict. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. In Vietnam, it's, it's not the schools that care. They, they will hire your, any native English speaker that looks nice and presentable and has like wants to teach. But for you to get a visa to stay in Vietnam long term, you'd have to choose one, right? And you would be a working visa because you're a teacher. And to get a working visa, you have to have a work permit. So yeah, it's like a chain reaction. So you have to get a work permit first. Then you can use that to get a working visa to stay long term. And in Vietnam, to get the work permit, the first thing you need, you have to have a de you have to have a degree if you're a foreigner. They don't allow people without a degree to get a work permit. And that's the that's the problem. So you can't even so then you can't get a work permit, which means you can't even apply for the working visa, which means you can't accept the job like that. The, the schools want to hire you, but you you're not able to stay long term or work in that country unless you have a degree if you're a foreigner. But all this stuff I'm talking about, they offer the same, AVSC's headquarters is actually in Ho Chi Minh. So they more even specialize in Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh and they're gonna do Hanoi. And then they've got a satellite here in Phnom Penh. That's what I did. Starting salaries are usually like 1200 or so. That's what I would say. Don't take less than that. Unless, like I know pe some people that make less than that, but they, on purpose, they're working a place that maybe has very minimal hours. And so they, they're taking a more, uh, you know, a less heavy workload. And so then that comes with maybe a lighter salary, but they prefer it that way kind of thing. But I mean, if you're trying to get like a real full job with like, a, and you're and you're teaching all those hours and prepping for all that, and you're a native speaker and everything, you shouldn't take less than like twelve hundred for full time. I think, or you or you should be able to find twelve hundred. Maybe you know, I can't tell you not to take it, but because there could be schools that will offer eleven hundred or something like that. But that's the that's around where you should be, and it can go much higher from that. I'm just saying that's the minimum you should have. Online Teaching to Freedom said, where, where did I learn about AVSC? Well, I was watching lots of YouTube channels before I left and I was watching a guy, Dave Does Cambodia. He's like an older guy and he walks around and he's a really nice guy and he talks about stuff about Cambodia. And I think he recommended to go through a, it's like a really big company. You've probably seen it online called ITA, International TEFL Academy. And at the same time, I had been doing my own research and Googling where I wanted to go. And I was already found that one and I was kind of reading about it already. And then I saw that Dave had said he did that one too. And uh, I forget what else, but I, it made me feel confident in that one. And so I went through ITA but the way it worked, and I didn't know this is, ITA is kind of the big umbrella International TEFL Academy. And then in all these countries where you go and do the course in that country, what they do is they find the most reputable school in those countries and they partner with them. And so they, they're like, oh, you'll, you want Cambodia? Okay, so when you get there, you'll be going to our partner school, AVSE or whatever. So, even though you think you're signing up with ITA, all they're doing is referring you straight to AVSC. Just, it's almost the same thing that I'm doing in these videos when I'm just recommending AVSC. So if, if you go through International TEFL Academy, it'll be the same thing as, going, as just going to the AVSC website and signing up, except you won't be helping me out. ITA will be getting a, a referral kickback. <laughs> And there's no other difference, so 
if you're if you're for sure going to do the program and you're kind of deciding well i'd rather go through a major website like uh honestly just go sign up directly to avc yourself like why go through a middleman or if you're scared like double check with ita are you just gonna am i just gonna be sent to avc is that the partner school and then they'll be like yeah they're really great and they're government accredited and they'll line you up with a job. They'll say all the stuff I talk about. It is great. And you could say, okay, that sounds good. And then go up, sign up yourself. Don't give them a commission. I think there's another one. Ah, I can't remember the name now. Tessel, Tefl. There's a Canadian one. Tefl Buddy or something. Travel bud, maybe. I can't remember. There's a there's one in Canada that someone was signing up for, and it's a guy that's close to my area too. And he's a he's been commenting and he plays drums and he's gonna come here. And he went through a company because he thought it looked more legit and it had all these accreditations and it was saying best one in Canada and all that. And it is legit, but when they, when you do their program for Cambodia, they'll set they'll send you here and you end up in the AVSE class. It's the same thing. These these schools all partner with each other. I guess that's smart, right? Just use the infrastructure that's already happening there. And they all like send business to each other. I don't know how it works deeper than that, but so a lot of the time you'll if you're deciding between doing AVSC or signing up with one of these major companies, then you'll you'll go with the major company and, and you'll just end up at AVSC anyways. Like, and who knows, I'm not, I can't speak on that, but who knows if they're adding on any middleman costs too, or their own little fees, like when you're going through some, you're, and they'll be like, oh, well, we have protection in case your flight gets canceled or we, if you want to cancel or something, like they'll, they'll say some BS about why there's extra fees when you could just go right to the AVC website and check it out and go right in. like. And if you dig it, then it'll say, how'd you hear of us? You just put like Tom trips out and it really uh, helps me. <laughs> if I can just get a, f a handful every month, I can keep this rocking. And yeah, it's really picking up now. I guess that's why someone mentioned in the chat that it, it feels like it's a little bit harder to find a job now. I think what they mean is it's harder compared to like a few years ago, but it's not like imp hard to find a job. Like, I think what that really means is like back in a few years ago, they were way more desperate like because nobody was here and because of COVID, everybody left. And so if you just could show up and you could speak English and you looked like you'll show up on time and like the bar was pretty low to get hired. So you could just get hired easily, especially if you do a good job. And then now it's like people are here and you might not be the only candidate applying. There could be like five people applying for that job or like, so. That's why, you know, and you could be up against people that went through AVSC and Sometimes they'll do teaching, like you come in for the interview and they'll take you down the hall and bring you into a classroom and there's kids in there and they'll tell you to teach for half, they just want to see you. <laughs> do you guys have any other questions? What should I expect benefits wise from the international schools in Phnom Penh? It's very basic usually. Like health benefits? I guess they could all be different. It depends what they sign up for. A lot of expats also will 
pay for like external health insurance and medical stuff. But you get one called NSSF, National Security, Social Security Fund. I think that's what it means. But it's like a very, I think it's very, very basic. Like if you need a checkup or you need a couple things of medicine or something, but it's not like a ton of coverage. And you get vacation days usually. Talking about benefits. Uh, yeah, I'd never had to really use anything like that. Is it hard for non-native speakers? There is non-native speakers teaching here, but you you can't command a higher salary. Like they'll use that as as an excuse to pay you less. So you'll you'll be getting like nine hundred a month or something. Maybe. You know, I'm all. This is all just spec. Like I'm all just generalization. Like you never know. Well, my friend works at a school and makes this much. Like it could happen if you really in the interview you really hit it off with them and they love you and they. And then they, they don't even care about that you're not a native speaker. They give you the, the salary that anyone would get with that job. And they won't try to lowball you. Like you, maybe they're really awesome people at the school that you find or something. Like you never know what's going to happen. But in my opinion, if you're not a native speaker, you, you make a little, few hundred less. I knew a girl that was from Sweden and she was making a little bit less. And even people from Africa... They'll pay people from Africa less, especially, sad to say, like the, if you're very dark skinned, it's worse and worse. The more dark you are, like the, there's a little bit of pre prejudice, I guess. You missed my question. Are there summer jobs in schools? Yeah, this, the schools that you work at will be open in the summer and they do summer school. Because you'll soon learn that schools here, it's just an illusion. Like, they're all a business. All the international schools, they're just getting the tuition money off people. And you're just babysitting in an educational way. That's what it feels like. Because they don't really care. When you see the cutbacks and or, like, the way they're doing stuff, you're just like, oh, this is just BS. Like, And the parents treat it like... The parents need to go to work, right? And they can't leave their kids at home. So it's kind of like a place to bring their kids. And so the whole year is going along. And then all of a sudden, if there's just two months off, the parents would have nowhere to bring their kids. So they just like keep the school going and keep the tuition coming. And then they'll... And summer school is kind of like a joke. You, you work your way through a novel and you just sort of, as a class, you read through a few pages every class. And then once you get like halfway through the book or a quarter of the way through the book you can say okay now you do a little project on that first few chapters and then and then you continue reading and maybe you get to a part where you can put them in groups and they act it out a little bit and then you keep on reading you just kind of work your way through a novel for the summer and it's only mornings and in the afternoons they would do like special classes so it would be like board game club or soccer or and the teachers could run them and it was something you're interested in. So I did a ukulele class because I'm a musician. So in summer school, I was reading through like a novel in the mornings and then teaching ukulele to kids in the afternoon. <laughs> and it's just your same salary keeps going. And it's, it's way easier than a normal uh, school because you don't have to make detailed lesson plans and grammar and you're just reading through a novel. And Oh yeah, and then when you get through the novel a lot too, then you... A lot of the time there's a movie that goes along with the book. So it's like, oh, we read half the book. Let's watch half the movie now. And you watch up to that part and then you read the rest of the book and then you watch the rest of the movie. So yeah, it's, most schools are open all summer anyways. And then some schools will allow you to have the option to just not work the summer and you, and you just don't get paid. And then I think some... If you're really lucky and it's like a higher end school, I think you could even get the summer off and it's paid. That's very rare. That's a nice view, eh? Eh? Yo, you caught me. If anyone heard that, that was a natural A, the Canada A. <laughs> That's a nice view, eh? <laughs> 
I'm from a city, so I don't do it that much, but there, there was a real one right there. I like this sun line thing going on. Yeah, summer's easy. What I would do, they had they had the book like in PDF form. I would project it up on the wall and we would go through maybe 10 or 12 pages and you get different people in the class to read or sometimes I would take over and read and because I do it way better. <laughs> Some of them are not as good readers as others and they'll be like, then I went to the and this like great action part is getting ruined by the delivery is not that strong from the from the student and sometimes i do the same 10 pages but with four different classes so it's like a repeat so then you get to your next class and you're and it's a whole new batch of kids but you're doing those same 10 pages again and so by the second or third one i've started to realize what parts are sometimes there's parts that's better if i read it and I'll act it out. I'll do like voices and uh, and then he da, 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 and, and they get more into it because it, it's so hard to get sucked into the story when someone's can't deliver it that well. And I know they're all learning English, but so like any really good parts, I would like take it sometimes for a page. And that's still important because teaching English, part of it is listening, right? So there's speaking, listening, reading, writing, pronouncing. Like those are the main things. So even though if I take over the reading, they still have to listen to me. And then when I finish a passage, I can, I can ask them a question right away. So what did the person say to that thing when they got there? And then see if they're actually, and you point at someone that's not listening. Like, you know, so you ask a critical question or whatever they call that. But every school is totally different. You never know. They might just run normal classes all summer. A lot of the time, it's like what it really feels like. You look around and you're like, this is just like a summer camp, but they're making it look like school. That's sort of what summer feels like. Oh, we're reading through a book. And then the afternoons, we're doing ukulele and like the other, it depends whichever one they want to sign up for. Some people were doing crafts or... Uh, there was like dancing club and there was like a board game club. I was doing ukulele. There was a, uh, I forget what else someone did. I think someone did something like making stuff out of Play-Doh, like sculpting. It depends. And if you work at a language center, they don't really run on the same schedule as a normal school, like September to June. They more like, it's like a private tutoring center. You can think of it like that. Like, so people come and in their spare time, they'll come and sign up for like extra courses if they want to brush up on their English. And this could be adults or students in university that are getting close to maybe an, an oral exam where they have to speak in English. And so they want to like take a take a two-month English course at this language center like just leading up to that so they really get fresh with their English and then you know and then I I'm, I work there and I'll get contacted today we had someone sign up that they really need to get ready for their thing can you meet with them like twice a week and and we just choose specific things that are gonna really help them for that thing you know what I mean and then I can drill stuff with them or t talk to them more or let them practice or whatever they need like It's that kind of a place. So sometimes there's adults coming outside of their work hours or outside their university hours, but there's also teenagers. And at my school, they can do it. They can choose to do the courses online or in person. And so right now my student is actually online. So I don't even have to go anywhere when I teach right now. I just go in my bedroom and open my laptop. 
set up a desk in there. I started walking through the water. Now I don't know. I don't know why I keep going. I don't have a bathing suit on. I'm seeing crabs under the water. I don't know if you could see that. They're little. They're like. They run sideways. So we'll probably end it off soon and we're gonna get some food and then early tomorrow morning we get on the boat back. The boat leaves at 9 a.m. It takes two hours to get back to Sihanoukville and then we have to get on a bus that takes about, it's about two hours but they stop at once and there's traffic so it takes like three hours. So we'll get home by like 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. tomorrow. And then Matt there has to make report cards on Thursday. <laughs> he was complaining about that. That always sucks because you have like all your students at once. You have to have all their marks in and every school is a little bit different, but you know, you, you got to print it out and there's only one copy machine or you're, you can only have so much paper or like they, there's always like something to make it annoying. Like, But we're probably going to end it off here. Do you see something? He has a hermit crab. That's awesome. I found it over there and as soon as I picked it up, it hid inside. <laughs> Look at it pop out. And if you like click on it, it'll hide away, see? Let him come out and walk around. I want to see him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see his leg under there. <laughs> okay, let's look at him again. I thought maybe he would run around. He was peeking out like very slow. Mary says, so pretty and calm. Yeah, this is a really peaceful resort. It's not a party resort. It's the sun setting. So Benno's asking about how can it be a better quality of life when you work full hours, but the salary is so low? It's because the cost of living is about 10 times less. And I mean, literally. Like I have a really big one bedroom apartment with two balconies and everything. And I pay like 250 a month. In Toronto, that would be like 3,500 a month or something like beers are like a pint of beer is like 75 cents and like uh, a meal is like 225 or something like when you it's like everything is so cheap my and I don't even hold back that much I'm pretty good with my money and I don't waste it on drinking and stuff but in a whole month all my costs of everything 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 put together is about eight hundred dollars in a month everything even buying stuff and going out and food and rent and And you could probably do it with less because I waste money on stuff sometimes. So 
you could probably do it on 700 and you could have an apartment that's only 150 a month if you really wanted to go basic so you could you could probably almost get by on like 650 here a month for everything and then you have no stress so like when i was working as a teacher full time i was able to save about 300 us a month at, on top of paying all my bills in full and everything And it's a it's an easy and fun job, and it like feels rewarding. And I I liked teaching. I think that made a difference for me. You have to actually like it. I used to be a I used to be a branch manager at Enterprise Rent a Car, and that was like 50, sixty hour weeks, and uh, I did that for twelve years, and it's like hell. It's like a soul sucking corporate job, and I. I tried to be in three bands at the same time as working that much and so I was always tired and always dreamed of quitting and all that stuff and so that was a catalyst a little bit for getting me out here for freedom and everything. And right now I work only part time and I only have one student so I, I teach, uh, right now I teach four hours a week so I, I only work at my job only four hours a week and I pay all my bills. <laughs> but it's because I also play in like three bands and we do gigs for money and then I get some money from YouTube, which is very little. And then when I can refer people to the AVSC, I get a little bit. So I like, I'm trying to get it trickling in from multiple places and then it almost is enough. <laughs> And that's why I've been doing it. And also I want more students. It's not like I only want f only four hours a week. I would like to have like 10 or 12 hours a week. I'm just waiting. They call me like, oh, we have a new student that enrolled. Would you like to do like Friday nights at 8 p.m.? And then I go, no, not Friday night. Like that's when all my band, when I play in the bands, that's the time when that happens. So I can't do that. I want like, my ideal thing would be like 8 a.m. till 10.30 or something every day or 8 a.m. till 11. Then you get home by like 11.30, 11.20, and you're done for the day. And I, I still have daylight to make videos, stuff like that. Sawadika, Thailand. I'm in Korong. Awesome, yeah, my girlfriend lives in Toronto. I know it's got crazy there. Cambodia slash Vietnam seems more for me. Yeah, Vietnam is a lot nicer and more, way more developed too and like just cleaner and more like built up and modern and the teachers get paid almost double there but i explained it earlier i think you weren't here you have to have a in order to get the long-term visa you have to have a work permit so you can get the work visa so so first thing when you go to get the work permit the requirement for that is you need a degree so it ends up being a chain reaction because if you don't have a degree you can't get the work permit and then because you can't get a work permit, you can't get the work visa, then you can't be there long term. You can't get a job there. The school wants you. The school would hire you. And then you say, well, they're not going to give me a work permit. Can't you pull some strings? You're the school and everything. And they go, whoa, whoa, that's you. That's all up to you. You have to, you're responsible to get all your documents. Believe me, I tried. <laughs> I have friends in Hanoi and it would be great. And they're like, the type of friends, they're like musician band friends. So I would already have a music scene and I have friends there and you'd make almost double. I don't have a degree, so I can't go there. So if you have a degree, go to the AVSC program and check out Ho Chi Minh or Hanoi. All right, sun's going down. I think we're gonna head in and eat food. I've been filming a few of the plates that we ate. I didn't do it every time. I'm not usually like that. But I think I did one breakfast and I did the lunch we just had. I filmed it a little bit. And then right now when we eat, I'll film that too. And then when I post the video about this resort, I'll cut to a little, here's a few meals we ate while we were here. And I'll show a couple of clips of these plates that we had. But yeah, we're gonna pack it in. The sun just went be crept behind there. Thanks for watching. 
If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. I, I post stuff like once or twice a week, plus lives, plus shorts. So it's a good channel to follow. <laughs> Until next time, remember, how you spend your days is the way you spend your life. It's never too late to start tripping out.